For stopping by my channel if you're new here my name is Jeremy this is my channel uh, normally I do uh, Nova Scotia kind of based content hiking videos drone videos um, and the occasional review so if that's what you're into you should consider subscribing anyway uh, I'm gonna get right into it the whole idea behind this video is we're going to be comparing these two the GoPro, the new GoPro Hero 10 to the GoPro Hero 7 Black Edition. Uh, I just received the GoPro Hero 10 in the mail and uh, it's less than a week old or they've been out for less than a week. There's tons of review videos out there on the GoPro Hero 10. Um, this isn't going to be an in-depth review of the Hero 10 and all of its features. It's going to be more of a practical comparison between these two cameras. This video would be for you if you're like me and you use your uh, your GoPro for vlogging, um, especially if you're an outdoor vlogger like myself, I do hikes, and uh, having a rugged action camera is ideal. Uh, the only reason I'm replacing this action camera is, I'll try to get a good view of it for you. There's a little bit of a fracture there. It's kind of hard to tell because the screen's a little bit dirty and I put a protector on it. I dropped the camera, it cracked, and it still worked uh, very well. Um, but when I started trying to use it in water several times, eventually a little bit seeped in. The touchscreen is finicky now, but it still records uh, beautiful audio and uh, video. So I went ahead and I waited for the 10 to come out. I was going to get the 7 or the 8, and usually in September they seem to come up with a new camera. So uh, I thought I would compare the two and kind of give you an idea if you're considering to get an action camera. Is the uh, GoPro Hero 10 Black suitable for you as a vlogger? First impressions of the between the two is there's a significant size increase on this. It's a little heavier. The screen's way bigger. You know, it's got the front the front facing uh, screen. The, the camera itself, the lens is bigger. My old uh, lens protector wouldn't fit on it. Um, it's it's thicker, like like this way. Um, it's made out of a different material. The Go GoPro Hero 7 Black is kind of like a rubberized coating. This is like, I don't know if it's magnesium. I'll have to, to look that up. It's, uh, it's kind of, uh, has a texture to it. It feels like very nice build quality. And I thought the same about the 7, to be honest. Um, so the way I'm going to compare these two cameras is going to be on several categories, I guess. Um, since I'm a practical user, I use my my GoPro as my primary camera, even a B-roll camera in some circumstances where, um, you know, I'm in the middle of the woods and it just doesn't warrant for me to, to lug along my DSLR. Um, it's expensive. I don't want it to get damaged. Having the external audio such as this, the wires hanging there has the chance to get caught on branches, get pulled out. Um, a lot can happen when you're hiking. And if you had to ask me, you know, five years ago when I was using the Hero 4 for audio, I would have just laughed. So the categories that I'm going to kind of rate these two against each other are video quality. Things like the, uh, the features that I use a lot for my B-roll, like the slow motion. Uh, or high high speed uh, frame rates. The quality for like time lapses or like a hyperlapse, uh, the time warp, stability. So the other category I'm thinking, it's gonna be like an ease of use type of thing. Um, and that's gonna be, you know, changing the battery, the SD card, um, moving the camera to different mounts. Um, I think those are important, especially when you're out in the bush. 
Um, and I'll try to get everything to fit into those categories. So for my initial impressions of, the, of using the GoPro Hero 10 Black, um, it's pretty similar to using the 7. You know, they have the mode button. It's on the opposite side. It's on the left, whereas the mode button on the 7, it's, it's on the right. So those are just kind of like um, design changes. They're not crucial, but it takes a little bit of getting used to. The user interface on the 10 is a little bit different. Um, as far as changing the settings on the GoPro Hero 10 versus the 7, overall it's a little better. It's a little bit more streamlined. It's a little bit more responsive because it has a faster processor. Um, my first impressions using the camera, quality overall, the video at a glance looked pretty similar to the 7. I was pretty happy with the 7. If I didn't break it, the screen, then I, I wouldn't be upgrading it. Um, but. I did notice that the the new slow motion modes, the uh, 4K 120 and the uh, 2.7K 240, I gave those a shot. Those are two major things that uh, I was looking forward to. Um, I noticed right away with the uh, the 4K 120, it looked pretty good. Um, There's a little bit of noise, but overall, I think very usable. And with the 2.7K, depending on where I shot, I noticed that it could end up looking pretty bad. As you can see here, I took a 2.7K uh, 240p at this waterfall and I don't know what the deal is with the trees. Um, they kind of look like that water paint effect on like uh, Photoshop or something like that and it's just unusable. But then again, I took another shot here of my son jumping on the trampoline and it just looked like the resolution was smaller than 4K, which it should, and it was nice and slow. So I don't know if that's uh, like a color science thing or a bitrate thing or what the deal is. Maybe it'll be fixed with uh, with a patch or something like that. Um, but it is something to note if you're buying this camera because of the 2.7K, uh, 240 frames per second. I don't think I would advise that. Uh, maybe wait until there's been a firmware update and see where it stands. Um, I can't imagine I'm the only one experiencing this. So let's go through the different tests. All right, so I'm at a local waterfall. Um, just doing a hike to a lower part of it. So I'm going to push through the bush a little bit because I want to have an idea of, you know, how level each one works, how well, the audio picks up doing what I do. Um, so right now, the audio that you're hearing is just out of my uh, my mic that's hooked to an external recorder. The mic you can see on my shirt. Um, and it's normally what I do when I have the, the audio on one of these GoPros or my DSLR as a backup, but if I'm in a hurry or I do need good audio as a backup, I found that the, uh, the 7 had pretty excellent audio for a GoPro. Uh, I do put some effects on it and tweak it uh, in Post and Premiere. And now you're hearing audio from the Hero 10. I, at this point, is recording this. I haven't heard the audio yet. Um, so. I'll be looking forward to hearing that when I edit this footage. And don't ask me how I process the audio. I found some tutorials. I think one of them was Gerald Undone or something like that. Hopefully this gave us a good indication of the audio and maybe how each one of these two cameras looks in varying light conditions in the forest. What, don't judge? Like you don't steal your kids' fruit snacks. Paw Patrol. Okay, so I figured it would be worthwhile to do the kind of desktop um, office vlogging setup, just to give you an idea of how that would look if you're gonna use um, a GoPro for that. So I have, this is my uh, DSLR that I use for this. This is the uh, Hero 7. And this is Hero 10. And I'll also turn the lights off because I have a studio light in here. 
Um, I'll turn that off so it'll give you an idea of the lighting situation, uh, what you'd be looking at for these two cameras without a big studio light too. Okay, so let's uh, switch over to the audio from the, uh, the Hero 10. One thing I did want to mention too, I, I do process the audio on the GoPros um, the same way I process the audio on the big camera. Another thing that's important to mention is um, on the GoPro Hero 7 and the vlog test footage and all the footage I took, I had Pro Tune, Pro Tune turned to flat. So the contrast looks a little bit different, but the overall quality of the video, the dynamic range shouldn't be much different. Um, now you're listening to audio recorded on the GoPro Hero 7 Black, this guy. Um, so yeah, the uh, just you'll probably notice that the shadows and the blacks are a little bit uh, cr more crushed on the, uh, the Hero 10. Uh, and everything's a little bit more flat on the uh, Hero 7. So without wasting any more time, I'm just going to get up and I'm going to turn my studio light off. I'll give you a, us an idea of how that's going to look. It's probably going to go to shit on every camera. That thing's loud. You can hear the fan. Okay, so this is GoPro Hero 10 uh, with the low light situation inside the basement. I mean, I have decent lights in my uh, office area. Now we're looking at uh, the Hero 7. Um, so I, I know they're small censored cameras and compared to some of the other small censored cameras like, for instance, this guy, the Insta360, I find the GoPro Hero uh, does a better job in low light. That's just my opinion, my experience. Same thing as my iPhone and the drone. GoPro does a little bit better of a job. I just I feel like uh, the noise that it makes in the shadows is a little bit more pleasing. Um, there's a little bit less of it. That's just my experience. No test, nothing official to base that on. Um, so I'm going to turn my light back on and I'm going to turn these GoPros off and I'm only going to stick with the big camera because I think this is good enough of a test. Um, and we're going to jump over and go through the rest of the tests that we have between these two GoPros. All right, so the next comparison I want to do is going to be the, uh, the time warp. Okay, so real quick, this is the first uh, 15x setting on the time warp. This is the Hero 10. Okay, and here's the same Time Warp 15X uh, on the Hero 7. It looks pretty good. It looks pretty equal. I got a few more of these. We'll uh, quickly look at them. This is also the Hero 7 in the woods. I can barely tell what's going on. It's just all over the place. And this is 30X, I believe. It's the same thing, but the Hero 10, it's better. It's definitely way easier to watch. 30X is definitely too fast for that path. Now I wanna show you a comparison of the 2.7K 240 FPS on the Hero 10. And I wanna compare that to the 240 FPS 1080p on the Hero 7. So first up is the, on the Hero 10. And compared to some of the other shots that I got, um, it looks a little better, but you can still see up above the waterfall. If you look close, you can still see that uh, kind of oil paint looking effect. 1080p version. So keep in mind, this is this video is exported at 4K. So this is this is uh, scaled up 200%, whereas the 2k stuff is only scaled up 50% more I gotta say I think it looks better than the 2.7k until they fix that issue um, you could do some noise reduction and some shots are very usable with the 1080p I personally don't I don't use it but I have when I first got the camera um, I'm gonna do a side-by-side -side and we'll see what that looks like okay there's a side-by-side they look pretty similar. The 
contrast is definitely better on the one that has the pro tune on by default and the detail might be slightly better but the 1080p version doesn't have that weird blobbiness going on so <laughs> um yeah like i said the first i would not buy this camera just for this mode um 2.7k 240 fps i wouldn't do it just for that but fortunately there are lots of other features worth up doing the upgrade for, so. Okay, this is a different slow motion test. This is also the GoPro Hero 10. I'm standing on a pedestrian bridge beside an overpass overlooking the highway to kind of give us a different idea. Okay, so even at a 1080p, I mean, it's arguably as good as a 2.7K 240 on, on the Hero 10. The, uh, 1080p 240 on the Hero 7. I'm standing by it, guys. Uh so the next test is going to be kind of like a jogging stability test between the two cameras. Uh, I'm not a fast jogger, but I'm going downhill, so uh, I got a little bit of speed. And as you can see on the first one, it's the Hero 7 Black. Um, it's stable, but it's uh, it's bobbing up and down pretty bad. Um, you can notice that it's washed out. That's because the Pro Tune set to flat. Here's the 10 black and it looks amazing in comparison. There's there's no comparing the two really honestly. And the uh, the Pro Tune uh, by default even looks better than the flat profile on the 7. Here's a side by side and the uh, the bouncing is really pronounced when you see them side by side. There's not much really to say, guys. It's just. Uh, Hero 10 takes the uh, the cake on this one easily. So if fast moving is your thing, go for the, the 10. Okay, so the last test that I wanted to do walking, there's uh, a large staircase at the park. I decided to um, hold both cameras side by side and walk down, uh, it's called Jacob's Ladder and First with the uh, Hero 7, I try to walk as fast as I could. I'm starting to realize that both cameras have very smooth footage, um, but it's this up and down bobbing motion from walking. I thought it would be more pronounced going down this big set of stairs. Um, this is pretty good. This is on the Hero 7. It's definitely usable footage. It's not buttery smooth, but it's pretty close. So I'm gonna jump over and check out the exact same thing, but from the Hero 10. And yeah, there's that tilt I'm guilty of. It's just because I'm double fisted with cameras, with GoPros. So um, that's not really the GoPro's fault, but there is still a wobble. I don't think this is pronounced. Definitely not in the, uh, the walking footage. So one last thing I wanted to show you guys before I wrap all this up is the underwater shots with this camera um, are absolutely beautiful, especially with the 4K 120 that you could not achieve that with the uh, the Hero 7. Um, you know, I'm able to see the fish swimming around, um, no problem, all kinds of detail, nice, uh, nice color. And the other thing is, as you'll see when I lift the camera out of the water, um, they have a new lens protector or it actually the water beads off it way better and it was something that was actually noticeable so here's me lifting it out of the water and you can see the water drips and there's really nothing stuck to the lens that's pretty sweet all right guys i think that's going to do it i'm just going to summarize this whole uh, this whole comparison between these two guys. Um, so in, in conclusion, basically you saw the test or if you sat through and watched the whole video, we have really not that much of an improvement for slow motion. Yeah, the 4K is pretty nice. It's not super slow because it's only 120, but it's great for B-roll. So um, it's definitely a check in the box for the, the Hero 10. Uh, 7 still holds up pretty good in that realm. Um, when it comes to attaching and detaching your accessories, you know, you get your little feet that pop out. 
Um, it usually makes life a lot easier than having to drop this guy into the cage unless you want to change the battery like I mentioned before then the 7 comes out on top there but um, on to kind of the overall stability you saw the jogging and going down the stairs footage uh, there's no comparison with the jogging it's just uh, the Hero 10 is hands down superior the the color the default colors on the uh, uh, the Hero 7 are kind of more punchy and cartoony, a little saturated. So I, I do like the colors on the Hero 10 a little better. Um, still, not really like, you know, you're going to jump out and go buy the Hero 10 for that. Um, the stability, maybe, depending on what you do. Audio quality, I find uh, the 10 is a little better. It's a little bassier. Um, you wouldn't need to really process it that much to be happy with it and it kind of drowned out uh, noise like the waterfall and all that pretty good uh, I'm happy with that too so would I upgrade to the hero 10 from the 7 if I didn't break it no I wouldn't not for what I do do I can't really say that it would be worth it I don't run so it's not really a factor for me and the walking footage looked pretty good on the 7 one little extra thing I guess so if you're doing some mountain biking or jogging or underwater in combined with your vlogging then it, it would be worth it I, I would say because um, then you get your front your front facing uh, screen to go along with that and all the other extras that uh, that come along with the faster processor and you get all that stuff included so I think if you can justify it with um, something like that then it's worth it Anyways guys, uh, find me on facebook.com slash newscotland and I'll see you guys in the next video.